name is David Schultz, D-A-V-I-D-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. And I've been the prison. I grew up, I had a, um, a rough start as a child. Um, I was abused as a child and that I think shaped my life. I was angry, I didn't know how to deal with things, so I would turn to drugs, alcohol. I did a lot of drugs and alcohol to try and stay disassociated with reality, I guess you could say. I think that led me down like a negative path from the beginning. I didn't really didn't understand how to deal with things and stuff like that. But my mom was wonderful to me. I mean, I had a good, good uh, parents. My dad was a little strict, but I think that in the, the long run, his strictness saved my life just because of where I ended up and everything. I was incarcerated because I got into an altercation with another man and he ended up passing away. I was scared. It was very, it's a very life altering thing when you first walk in the doors to a prison. No one guides you through it, you know, no one tells you, well, this is what you're going to expect and this is what you need to do and stuff like that. It's just, it's a, you're in there and you need to figure it out very fast. In there, it's a, it's a whole different world when it comes to groups of people that you hang out with or gangs or whatever you want to call it. It's a race separated environment. So it's always best that you stay with your race and that you stay strong about your race and don't sway outside of that. When I was in there, I found out that, you know, even within my race, there were people that I really didn't agree with their thoughts and their ways of thinking of trying to help each other and help our race inside there to get stronger and do what we needed to do so we could get out and be successful out here. So I sort of separated from them type of groups or gangs or you know, however way you say it. And I, I did, I started um, a group of my own to where it was all about standing up for what we are as white people and not being weak, not being a target, and to stand up for, for yourself no matter what it takes to make people understand that they can't take advantage of you. And my thing was building people up, not oh, go get this guy to prove that you're this and go do this to this guy. No, I didn't want that. I wanted us to stand strong together and do what we needed to do to stay positive and, and show that we are respectful people and do what we need to do to get out and be successful out here. I was attacked and I was a target to um, other races because when I seen a new white man come into prison that was young, I knew that he would be targeted and I would always try and get him and talk to him and build him up and say, this is what's gonna happen, this is what they're doing to you, and you need to do this and I will back you up 100% as long as I know that you'll fight next to me for yourself. I was attacked for that because they wanted me off the yard is what it was called. They wanted me out of there because I was helping these white guys build themselves up and stand up for themselves and fight for themselves. And predators don't like that. They want to attack somebody and have them bow down and give them all their stuff, their commissary, which is store stuff that you can get. And they want them to just give it all up. They don't want them to fight. So they seen me and I was known for that, for someone that built up white people and, and taught them how to fight for themselves. And they didn't like that. So I did, I got attacked, but I always stood up and I never backed down ever. And I think that's why I survived and I am out here to talk to you guys today. I made um, a few acquaintances from other races. It was a mutual respect. They knew where I stood, I knew where they stood, and we respected each other for that. And we would say hi, but we'd go on our way. We wouldn't hang out on the yard. We wouldn't 
be hanging out in hallways talking or nothing like that because it's just you understand that. It's just a respect that we know where we stand. And my thing was with the people that were associated with me, I made it clear that what we stand for is not hating anybody. It's for respecting and standing up for ourselves as who we are and where we stand and where we are in the, in incarcerated. That, that's all I ever taught people and, and talked to people and young guys about. I don't want no one to hate anybody for anything. I just want you to stand up and be proud of who you are and what you are. Well, my incarceration has um, definitely had a strong impact on my life where it is now, for sure. When I was released, it was like, well, to go back, being incarcerated, the, the air feels different. The smells are different. It's a real heavy feeling on you. I mean, I'll not explain it if you've never been to it, but. And when I was released, it was like I could breathe. It was just, it was very different. And it was, it was really hard, I mean, to this day, to get like adjusted and understand how things work. There's a comment that my brother made to me. When I first got out, I was struggling, trying to adapt and everything, and he said, and he told me, he said, David, if you can adapt and adjust to the hell that you've been through being in prison, you should be able to do the same out here. That's because, he said, because it's no different. You just have to adjust to a different thing now because I was incarcerated for over 18 years. So I just had to, had, I had to adapt and get back into things out here, which I'm still struggling to do because I'm not accepted because of my looks, you know, my tattoos on my face and everything. And, um, in job, like filling out applications, they ask about, have you ever been convicted of a felony? And I don't lie on them. And it's like, as soon as they see that I was convicted of a felony, and then what the felony was, it's like, they just shut me right down. My advice for young people or anybody in general that are struggling in life or have any kind of doubts within themselves that could end up putting them on the wrong road and ending up where I was, to stay strong, figure out what you're thinking, break it down if you have to, figure it out for yourself because nobody can do it for you. You can go to counselors, you can talk to people, but only you truly know what's inside you and what's going on to fix it and make it right so you don't end up doing something that you'll regret the rest of your life. It's not worth it. It's a horrible experience to have to go through. And anybody out here that has never been there has a chance to never go there. And nothing, nothing is worth going there. I promise you from my heart. I'd just like to say that um, some people that are incarcerated do need to be there and do never need to come out. Um, but that's not everybody. I just think it would be fair to give people a chance that have changed and just, me personally, I'm not really given the chance by society to show that I deserve to be out here. So that's it.